Thing that I just experienced, an aha moment for me uh, just some few days ago. One thing that I've just realized is that many students fail the exams because of disobedience. What does that mean? Many students fail the exams because of disobedience. You know, they refuse to obey instructions. Instruction from the lecturers, instructions from the examiner, instruction from the invigilators, and disobedience throughout. One of the reasons is disobedience. Now, you've got to be careful about this very well. I don't know how this has affected you in a way, but you've got to find out, am I obeying everything that is, uh, I'm being asked to do? So, for instance, if you are asked to define and explain and you just define and you live it there or explain then you state and live it there you have disobeyed the instructions and since you've disobeyed you'll be punished for that so you've got to be careful about it because if you are not careful some of these minor things that were some of these minor issues were going to affect you so four things i wanted to focus on hard work dedication sacrifice and obedience these are the four characters these are the four features that I believe that you must uh, anchor around your life if you're gonna do anything substantial in this world not only about passing your exams but becoming that person that you want to become hard work dedication sacrifice and obedience if you pull these four things and let them become your anchor, let them become your, your sibling, let them become your family, let them become your friends, I can guarantee you that everything that you touch will turn to gold. Because the world is not looking for local people. The world is not looking for ordinary people. The world is not looking for everybody. The world is looking for the exceptional. The world is looking for the plus touch. The world is looking for the quality, the best, the very best of everything. So think about this carefully. If you can do these four things from today, everything you put on your hands on and everything that you want to do, work hard at it. Dedicate yourself to it. And through dedication, you're going to sacrifice. And as you're doing all these things, all these three things, make sure you pay attention to the instructions. The instructions are very important because to obey is better than to sacrifice. And many of you are where you are because you are refusing or you refuse to obey instructions that were given in the past. So if you are going to build your life going into the future, you've got to work on that and make sure you obey everything everything sometimes it's hard to obey but you've got to obey the instruction one of the things i tell my students is this that um when you hear get ready to stop work in the exam or stop everything you're doing and review the work that you've done and it's like that is bs because they are like Ishira, this is the time that um the apport is coming this is the time that i'm able to write more and you said i should stop and go and review but that is critical because if you don't review what you've done, sometimes just a grammar, sometimes just a, a, a misspelled word, sometimes just the way you uh, conjugate a sentence or construct a sentence can affect the meaning that we read or we get from the answer that you've provided. And these are minor, minor things that goes a long way to affect a lot of students. So if you're going to position yourself to write the exams, you're going to position yourself to pass the exams, there are some minor, minor instructions that you don't take for granted. Another instruction is to write your name, your candidate's number or their index number on the paper, as well as make sure that you start every question on a fresh page, as well as you make sure that you number your questions, as well as you make sure that at the front uh, page of your answer booklet, you write down the questions you answered in the order 
uh, that you've answered them. These are all minor, minor things. Minor, 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 minor. And many of you take those things for granted. And if you take them for granted, the examiner is going to punish you. And when the examiner is punishing you, it's going to be tough. It's going to be really tough. So you've got to be careful about this and, and make sure that you pay attention to the minor instructions. Very, very important. For those of you who are attending lectures, make sure you listen to your lecturers. You obey your lecturers. If you are told to do something, do it. You are given assignment, do it. You are given a project to work, do it. You are given a question to try on, do it. Don't give yourself excuses. I didn't get time to do it. And then you come and sit in the class, the whole thing will be solved, then you copy it into your book. It doesn't make you productive. It doesn't challenge your brain. Because when you look at a question, a, a, a crack, literally crack your brain about it, think about it, tr try something on it, and then that question is being resolved, that is where the aha moment will come. Then that is where you know, oh, okay, when I get here, this is what I'm supposed to do. When I get here, this is what I'm supposed to do. And that is how you build your understanding. But if all you do is to sit down and then you copy, you copy, you copy, you copy, you copy. You are not engaging your intellectual faculties. And if you don't engage your intellectual faculties, it means that your mind cannot appreciate what you are studying. It is the aha moments that makes you to understand what you're doing. It is the aha moments that makes you to become successful in what you're doing. So I want you to make sure you pay close attention to this. There are a lot of instructions you're going to be having. You're going to be uh, 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 given both in the exam or outside the exams or where you are attending lectures. There are a lot of instructions that will be given to you. It's, it's important for you to pay attention to the instructions and obey the instructions. Don't give yourself excuses. I've shared this already on my channel. Don't give yourself excuses because some of you, you give some feeble excuses and excuses that don't add up, excuses that don't make sense. You've got to become serious about this. And four things I want you to take into consideration. You're going to work hard. You're going to dedicate yourself. You're going to sacrifice and you're going to make sure that you obey instructions. From your lecturers, in the exam hall, on the question paper. So you take a question paper and this is the question paper in front of you. You read a question. Now this is our corporate reporting question kit though. You, 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 you look at the question and you read. It says, prepare the group uh, statement of financial position of Ray as of 31st December 2015. That is an instruction. And you've got to obey it in accordance with the question. It's very important. So you don't do what you think you got to do. You must do what you must do, what you are required to do, because that is what gets you the pass mark. Think about that. Let's switch over to the business lecture in Wooden Show. As we discussed today, one key important issue. Remember, if you have not subscribed to my channel, you're missing a lot because every single day I release new lecture videos on various subjects, on various topics to help you to prepare for your examination. If you have any questions, leave it in the comment box of this video. I'm going to be looking at it and head on to YouTube if you're not watching this on YouTube already um, and subscribe to my channel, Insura Premium. Share the video as well with others. We want to build a community, reach as much people as possible, and reach a, 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 and, and lend a helping hand to a lot of people across so we can prepare together and pass the exam, but most importantly, become a better version of ourselves. So I'll see you on my channel and I'll see you on the business lecture in Within Show from Monday to Friday, 4 p.m. or 1600 GMT. I'll see you on my channel. Hi there. So thank you very much for joining the broadcast. Today is the business lecturer in Wooden Show and today we're looking at one of the uh, subjects that you have requested uh, uh, for us to or for me to discuss on that is uh, public sector accounting and finance and we're going to be looking at some issues in public sector accounting and finance. Now remember the show goes live every single day from Monday to Friday at 4 p.m. or 1600 GMT and you can join me 
and you ask any questions and I'll be here to answer your questions for you. It is the business lecturer in Wooden Show. So if you have any questions, put them in the chat box or in the comment box and I will answer all of your questions for you. If there are any topics that you want to see more on the channel, there are any uh, uh, things you want me to discuss, whatever subject it is, whatever topic it is, just leave it in the comment box. I'm going to be reading it and I'm going to be designing a course in, in for it in relation to that. Now remember, for a limited time from today to uh, I think Friday, we are running a promotion for you to get access to my online courses with a 35% discount off. Okay, we're running a promotion. So for those of you who are looking for or an opportunity to join our community and study under my mentorship and get access to our full courses, get access to our ebooks, get access to our question kits, and get access to a one-on-one -on -one session with me or one of our dedicated lecturers here uh, via Skype, then you can head on to my uh, website. The link is in the description, insurapremiumuniversity.com slash courses. And on the checkout page, you use the coupon code, I love Insura Premium. I love Insura Premium. It's a one word, I love Insura Premium. And if you use that on checkout, you'll be given 35% off your course so that you can study, join our community, be part of the family, so you prepare well for your examination. Now, remember, it's Tuesday now, and it is um, today is 11th. So this coupon is actually valid for just a few days. And this, we've already done ads about this and run it on Facebook, on Instagram, on Google, on LinkedIn, and the ads are already running. So, and it's limited for a number of people. So if this is something you are interested in, you want to study under my mentorship, you want to get access to all our uh, courses online, then click the link in the description, insurapremiumuniversity.com slash courses, Select a course and on the checkout, use the coupon code I love Insura Premium. That is my Vals Day gift to you so that I can assist you so you prepare well for your examination. So you can go to my website after watching this video or right now, insurapremiumuniversity.com forward slash courses. And on the checkout page, you use the coupon code I love Insura Premium so that you get a Vals Day 35% off your course so you can prepare well for your examination. So, hey, welcome to the show today. If you have any questions, comment below with your questions. I'll be very much excited to answer all your questions for you. Just want to give a quick shout out to uh, some of our students across the uh, country that we are having. Real quick before I get into it, uh, for all for we have students across uh, the continent and across the world watching our channel in the last few days and I want to take some time and definitely our Ghanaian students very important Nigeria student from South Africa Tanzania Zambia Kenya Botswana or Botswana uh, United Kingdom Sierra Leone um, Gambia India Malaysia you know, Namibia, I don't know if I've mentioned that already. Yeah, Namibia and uh, others, others. We love everybody. Love you so much for the support that you've had, you, 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 you have for my, uh, for us here at the Shirai Premium Organization. We love you so much and we appreciate your support. So today, I want to take you through uh, the introduction to public sector accounting and finance and uh, discuss with you some few issues in relation to what public sector accounting and finance is about. We're going to look at the objectives of public sector accounting. We will look at the various types of public sector organizations. Then we will also spend some time to look at the users of public sector uh, accounting uh, information. Then we will spend some time and look at some uh, the legal regulatory framework for public sector accounting then probably if we still have time in the day in our for this session then we will spend some time to look at the roles uh, or the functions of various uh, individuals or, or institutions in public financial management like the spending officer like the minister of finance and economic planning like the controller accountant general like the administrator of the um, Common fund, 
in relation to that all of these are very critical areas in looking at public sector accounting so if you are new here again make sure you hit the subscription button and remember to click on the notification bell so that if i go live like this or we release new lecture videos you'll be the first person to be notified so you get access to be able to get the content you need so you can prepare well for your examination so let's get into today's discussion public sector accounting lectures or public sector accounting now i've already given you an overview of the subjects that i've given you an overview of what a subject is about in case you missed that you can uh, go to my playlist and you'll be able to get access to the business lecture i will ensure you'll get access to that overview of public sector but i'm just going to repeat that again briefly here then we get into today's discussion now with a public sector accounting and finance based on the new icac syllabus that is effective from november 2019 up until 2024 hopefully if it is not changed again or uh, before then there, uh, there are a couple of things that we need to cover and understand. Budgeting and budgetary control is going to be key. So public sector budgeting, public sector budgeting. For our on-campus students, we just finished with public sector budgeting uh, in relation to that. So public sector budgeting is fundamental. And you're gonna before you can when you are looking at the public sector budgeting, you're looking at issues such as the differences between a plan and a budget. You are looking at the issue about the objectives of budgeting. You are looking at the importance of budgeting. You are looking at the limitations or uh, disadvantages of budgeting. That is all the things that you must understand there. The content of the budget is also something that is critical in, 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 the, in, the, in understanding public sector budgeting. Then from there, we come to the issue in relation to the public expenditure uh, and account public uh, expenditure framework and accountability. So the public expenditure framework for accountability is a tool that is used to assess uh, the efficiency and effectiveness of public financial management. That is something fundamental that we've also done that already for our on-campus uh, students as well as our online students. So PFA is going to be there. It's actually PFA and value for money. Gift miss is part of the issues here. Uh, Ghana uh, Integrated Financial Management Information System. That is also something that we need to understand in relation to that aspect of the syllabus. Then certainly the roles or functions or duties of various individuals in public financial management, like the role of the uh, finance minister, the role of spending officers, the role of principal spending officers, the role of the auditor general, the, the uh, accountant general. So the role of these guys also a very critical aspect. And we've done all of these things on our on-campus discussion as well as for our online students in relation to that. So in case you are writing public sector, hopefully by now, I believe you've done this. Then when we skip from these, we go to uh, the issue about um, <clears throat> public procurement, very critical area of the syllabus, because when it comes to public financial management, one of the fundamental issues is public procurement. So you're gonna be looking at public procurement, and then the public-private partnership arrangements, okay? The public-private partnership arrangements. So these are all 60% of the syllabus, okay? I skipped some minor, minor ones here in the introduction aspect, but these are all 60% of the syllabus. Now, for our on-campus students, we've finished with budgeting, we've done PIFA, we've done the introduction, we've done gift mates, we've done the role of public financial management, then when you finish with these, you come to the EPSAS, that is the financial statement aspect. You know now that Ghana has adopted and implementing the international public sector accounting standards, and that is being implemented on st in stages. So by 2023, hopefully we hope we're looking at uh, Ghana fully integrating and fully using the, uh, uh, the EPSAS. So we come to the financial statement preparation, 
in the public sector and the eight stars are going to be critical and just this week that is to be specific yesterday we started with our ifsas discussion uh calculation aspects and from there we're going to be looking at uh the procurement and then the public uh, public private partnership agreement and that will end us on the issue in relation to that so when it comes to public sector accounting and finance these are the thematic things that we need to understand remember this is the 40 percent aspect okay financial statement preparation um looking at the EPSAS. if you look at the november 2019 examination you realize that there were questions where the examiner requested you to uh look at how the various things will be treated the various things will be recognized this is the millionaire booklet how to get super rich my name is grant cardone i'm the that is more in relation to the issue for the uh, 40 percent of the syllabus so this is what you have to understand in relation to public sector accounting and finance now in case you missed my uh, earlier overview of the syllabus i mentioned that one of the acts that is critical for you to pass the public sector accounting and finance subject is the public financial management act 2016 <coughs> act 921 okay the public financial management act 2016 act 921 this is a very fundamental act because in this act it has various issues there about budgeting it has various issues there about the roles of uh, uh, various individuals like I mentioned earlier the principal spending officer the minister of finance the auditor general the role of parliament all of these things are tabled in the public financial management and issues about sources of finance to government uh, public I didn't even mention that it's critical revenue and expenditure management how could I mix that I don't know why Revenue and expenditure management. This is critical of the syllabus. So you have to make sure that you understand what are the sources of revenue to government, what are the expenditure of government. Now, the reason why you must understand this particular topic, most importantly, is when you are not preparing the final account for the consolidated fund or the final account on or for a department, a ministry, or an agency in relation to that. Now, all of these things are explained to in much detail in the Public Financial Management Act 2016, Act 921. So you make sure that if you are writing public sector, get that act. You can just Google it. Public Financial Management Act 2016, Act 921. Google it and download it. But if you are using my book on public sector accounting and finance, that is already covered there. Maybe let me show that to you as well. So this is my book on uh, public sector accounting and finance, and this has everything that you need uh, in relation to the 60% of the syllabus. The only thing we didn't cover in detail in this book is the EPSAS, all right? Because when we added the EPSAS, this book is going to go way outside the scope. Then for those of you writing taxation also, this is my book on advanced taxation. You've seen the ads on social media. You've seen uh, the ads everywhere. This is my book, my book on advanced taxation as well. These are new books. We released them um, in December 2019. So these are new books based on the new issues that you must understand. So that is the overview. These are the things you must look out for in the public sector examination. Remember, the exam is going to be um, balancing of about 60-40%, 60% theory or 65% theory, then 35% calculation or IPSAS issue. So you make sure that the IPSAS, you understand them. Now, comment below if you want me to spend some time on the IPSAS. You know financial reporting standards, I've covered a lot of the financial reporting standards that you need for financial accounting and corporate reporting. So if you want me to cover the IPSAS as well for public sector, Comment below and tell me, yes, Inshira, cover them. Or put it in the chat box and say, yes, Inshira, cover them. And I'm going to be making time. We have content on all of these things. We can make them available on the channel, upload them in stages so that you can prepare well for your examination. All right. So let's get into the, the discussion. Introduction 
to public sector accounting and finance. So when we talk about public sector, what do we mean? What does it mean when we say the public sector? What does it constitute? What does it involve? What does it include? What is public sector? In a simple language, we say that, now in case you are wondering what book I'm going to be using for our discussion, certainly I'm going to be using my book on public sector accounting and finance. Now, if you enroll with us online, you get an e-version of this book for free. You got it? You get an e-version of that for free uh, or, or when you register with us. So, what is the public sector? Or when we talk about government, what is government? Now, we say that public sector, so let's take some definitions briefly. Public sector accounting, in a simple language, we define public sector first, then let's come to public sector accounting. So what is a public sector? Public sector refers to all the organizations which are not privately owned and operated, but which are established, run, and financed by government on behalf of the public. So all the institutions, all the organizations, which are not privately owned, but they have established, run, and funded by the government, funded by the uh, public, uh, yes, funded by the government on behalf of the public, are uh, what? The uh, public sector, or it's what we refer to as public sector. So when we talk about public sector accounting, what then are we talking about? Public sector accounting, it simply has to do with uh, the process of recording, analyzing, classifying, summarizing, communicating and interpreting financial information about governments in aggregate and in detail and recording the all transactions for receipt, transfer and all other uh, uh, public and the disbursement of public funds. So the public sector refers to all organizations not privately owned but which are established, run and managed by the government on behalf of the people. So if these are institutions established by the government, then public sector accounting has to do with what? The recording, so the collecting, the classifying, recording of all the information about these institutions on how they receive funds, how they transfer funds, and how they disperse what? The public fund. Now the key question we need to ask ourselves is, what are the objectives of public sector accounting? Why is it necessary for us to study public sector accounting? Now, if you're a good student of financial reporting, the objectives of financial reporting is just like the same thing that we're gonna be looking at here with just a sweet touch in relation to that, with just a sweet touch. So what are the objectives of government accounting or the objectives of public sector accounting? Number one, to fulfill legal regulatory requirements. To fulfill legal regulatory requirements. You see, based on the constitution, it is mandated that at least once a year, the government prepares what? The financial statement and subject those financial statements to the auditor general for them to be audited. So in order for the government to fulfill that legal requirement, that constitutional duty, there has to be a system of what? Accounting. There has to be recording of transactions. There has to be the monitoring of how funds are received, funds are transferred, and how funds are disbursed for various purposes for the government. So the first objective of government accounting or public sector accounting is to fulfill that legal requirement. Because how can you determine whether the government is doing well or not? How can we determine uh, if there are were no or there are no financial irregularities? How can we determine if the government is doing well, if we are achieving value for money or not? We only do, do that, uh, we can only determine that when the financial statements are presented and they are what? Audited and like you know the public accounts committee is currently reviewing the uh, audited financial statements for 2016 and a lot of things have been popping up during that hearing about uh, How public funds are being spent. So that is the first objective Second 
to perform the stewardship function. I've actually gone a bit into that one, to perform the stewardship function. Now, remember what we said about the public sector. All the organizations which are not privately owned, but they are established, run, and financed by the government on behalf of the people. So who gives money to the government? You and I, the citizens. So we have entrusted the government, the president, the ministers, the parliamentarians, we've entrusted them with the funds. So at the end of the day, we want to find out how they have used that fund, whether they've used it for the purpose for which they requested the funds in relation to that. So the second thing is what? To perform the stewardship function. So they have to come out to account for how they, they, they uh, use the funds. But how can you account for something if you have not taken records of it over the period? That is why public sector accounting is important. Three, to enable government to plan well the future activities and programs of the nation. To enable government to plan well the future activities and programs of the nation. For planning purposes, how can government determine whether they should continue with one district, one factory, whether they should continue with NAPCO, whether they should continue with free SHS, whether they should continue with one constituency, one million dollars, whether they should continue with all other flagship pro uh, uh, policies or projects. The only way government will be able to decide that and to bring in new policies is when they have what? Recorded these transactions over the years or during the year. So it helps government in planning what future activities. Then the fourth point we can talk about is to provide a process of controlling the use of the financial and other resources. So another reason why uh, public sector accounting is important is for what? The control purposes of resources. So when government realizes that hmm, this is how much money we had, but this is how much money we spent, and we are spending more than how much we are supposed to have spent, then that means that the government is spending too much and they can put in place control measures. It is true that, that the government is able to determine, oh, we are borrowing too much, we are borrowing excessively, the debt to GDP is rising, or the debt to GDP is falling. Let's do this, let's do that. So it helps the government to put in control measures about public resources in relation to that. Then the last thing I want to add is to provide the means by which actual performance may be compared with target results. Every government, for instance, we will, you will discuss that or we will look at that and that budgeting later on if I'm going to be discussing that live on, 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 on YouTube. But when, when, the, when the budget is prepared and the budget is approved, that authorizes governments to go and raise revenue and spend money. At the end of the day, there is an objective for each expenditure item that the parliament has approved. So if we want to find out about whether those targets are met, whether those uh, objectives are met, then we have to compare the actual results against what? The budgeted, uh, 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 the budget. But how do you compare the thing unless you have recorded what? The actual results. So that is also one of the objectives of the government accounting or public sector accounting. Then the last one is to evaluate the economy efficiency effectiveness with which governance is carried out. That is value for money. So if, for instance, we are constructing a 300 kilometers road and we are spending $200 million and another person constructed that same road and spent $120 million, then who is doing well? If we are uh, uh, employing people and we are paying them whatever amounts and somebody is employing the same people or another government employs the same people and they are paying this amount, then what is it? So one of the reasons or one of the objectives of government accounting or public sector accounting is what? To evaluate efficiency and effectiveness as well as what? Economy. And that is something we'll be looking at later on under time value of money in relation to that. So I see a question there. Let me see if I can reply that real quick before I continue with my next slide. Okay, Lamino Lams. Now, in case I mention your name wrong, you forgive me, okay? Lamino Lams. 
When are you going to teach stocks, government accounting in public sector? Lamino, this is a uh, part of the EFSAS, so I'm going to be treating that later on. Maybe you did not join the broadcast earlier, but I mentioned that if you want me to cover the EFSAS, okay, this is under EFSAS. Uh, no, I don't want to. I don't want to miss it. But it's part of the EFSAS that I'll be teaching later on. So. If this is something you want me to cover, you can comment below and let me know and I can cover it. So, if there, there is a demand for the topic, then I will cover it, let me know. So that is it, and that's what you must understand about that. So these are the objectives of public sector or government accounting. Now, so after talking about the objectives of public sector uh, accounting or organizations okay so I think I see another question let me look at that as well real quick okay so let me look at the questions it went back when are you going to teach financial reporting Edward, give me a topic on financial reporting you want me to teach, okay? If you, um, like, I designed this live uh, lectures based on questions that students ask, okay? So the public sector we're teaching today, it's based on a question that we had uh, about two weeks ago. So what topic in financial reporting do you want me to take? If the demand comes, I'll look at it and then I'll, be, I'll design a course for that. So, Edward Ban, you comment below with the topic you want me to cover in relation to financial reporting, okay? And I'll make time available for that. Right, so we've discussed what public sector budgeting is and we've spoken about uh, the objectives of public sector budgeting. But when it comes to public sector accounting, one of the things you must understand is that uh, there are types of public sector organizations. Now, the entire public sector, like I mentioned earlier, has to do with the organizations. So we can categorize ver uh, the public sector organizations into various categories. So there are four uh, levels at which that public sector organizations may exist. Okay, so Edward, I see you commenting again. Standards, IAS1. Okay, so IAS1 is the presentation of financial statement. So you want me to cover that standard in anyway? Okay, no P. We'll make an arrangement for that. We will do that. So whatever you want me to cover in financial reporting, so just be specific. You tell me about it. If it is an accounting standard, you tell me about it. If it is... Um, a topic you want me to cover maybe console but one thing is this Edward one thing is this my channel has a lot on financial reporting on this channel we have a lot on financial reporting than you think so this is what I want you to do Edward check the playlist titled accounting standard series okay there is a playlist there called accounting standard series on that playlist or in that playlist you're going to uh, get access to most of the accounting standards, almost all the accounting standards, uh, because I've already covered all of these on the channel. So you can check that playlist after watching this if you are doing public sector. Then you can check the playlist on consolidated financial statements. Consolidated financial statement. In that playlist also, you will get materials on consolidation. So for financial reporting, and corporate reporting, we, we already have a lot on the channel already and chances are whatever you want me to take or uh, teach on, it's already available on the channel. So you can look at it and then when I come live, I will come and just solve questions in relation to that. So there are, so the next thing we want to look at is types of public sector organizations, types of public sector organizations. Now, public sector organizations may exist uh, at four levels, at four levels. So we have the international level, we have the national level, we have the regional level, and we have the local government level, okay? 
So the international level, the national level, the regional level, and then the local level. Now, the international level has to do with the embassies, okay, outside the country and other multinational or multi-state partnership that Ghana may have with other countries. These are the international level. Then on the national level, we're talking about maybe the central government, ministries, department, and agencies. Then on the regional level, we're talking about the various regions and other issues. But what you must understand is that what you must understand is that at each of these levels, we may have the central government, we may have boards, authorities, and commissions. Then we will have also the local government. So at the central government, I've already mentioned that the central government is made up of the issue. Now, primarily the central government is made up of the uh, the executive, the cabinet, oh, sorry, the executive, the legislature, and then what? The judiciary. So that is at the central government level in relation to that. However, we have the ministries, departments, and what? Agencies. Then we come to boards, authorities, and commissions. These are organizations that exist to undertake specific uh, activities. So for instance, we have the Minerals Commissions, the Electoral Commissions, the Ghana Atomic Agency Commissions, and we have various other public sector organizations. Then on the local government, this is where we're talking about what? The MMBAs. All right, the Metropolitan Municipal District Assemblies in relation to that. So I see a comment there by uh, Lamino. Thank you. I don't understand issues relating to shortfalls and excesses. Uh, excesses, that is price adjustment, claims account. Lamino, your question is not clear. Maybe you can clarify it better. You said you don't understand issues uh, in relation to shortfalls and excesses. That is price adjustment and then claims accounts. Uh, I really don't get to your question. Maybe rephrase your question or reclassify, re or clarify it better for me so I can answer you better. Okay, Lamine. So if you can try to put it in another way, I can get what you're talking about because I don't know what you're talking about. So I can help you well. All right. Now the big question we then ask ourselves is. Why do public sector organizations exist? Okay, so why is the Electoral Commission there? Why is the Ghana Police Service there? Why do we have the ministries? Why do we have the departments? Why do we have the agencies? Why do we have uh, Ghana Broadcasting Corporation? Why do public sector organizations exist? Why do they exist? So in answering that question, let's look at some of the reasons why public sector organizations exist. Number one, to provide goods, to provide public goods and services to individuals and institutional consumers regardless of their ability to pay. Okay? So to provide public goods and services to individuals and institutional consumers regardless of their ability to pay. So the first primary reasons why, reason why public sector organizations exist is that they want to provide or they have to provide public goods to individuals irrespective of their ability to pay, like road. Imagine we say that we're going to be constructing roads based on people's ability to pay. Now, certainly it means that there are some communities that will never have roads because of uh, the level of poverty, that are uh, that would be that is in those communities, okay, or that we can find in those communities. So, public goods that people can use, which will be provided by the government, is one of the reasons why public sector organizations exist. Two, to provide public goods and services whose investment capital is quite high and hence cannot be provided by the private sector. To provide public or to provide goods and services whose investment capital is quite high and hence cannot be provided by the private sector. Now, you know, one of the reasons why I invest, why private sector organizations invest, is to make what? Profits. Is to make profits. But, you know, when we are looking at the profit aspect, it means for every investment I put in, there has to be returns on the investment. 
So if for every money I put in, there has to be returns, that means I'm going to price that thing at very high. And one of the things is that many of the public goods that people use require high investment, but the returns are low. Now, those high investment with low returns projects will never be approached by the public sector organization, by the private sector organizations. For that reason, the public sector organizations exist to provide those goods, to provide those services to the individuals. Now, I don't know if you have had experience with private securities, but imagine the Ghana Police Service is a private uh, uh, organization run by private individuals. I guess there are some countries whose uh, police service is run by private or as a private institution. Now imagine that what that is going to be like. It's going to be very, very expensive to what, engage them. But because it is a public good, you can have access to it at what, a minimal price than what you are supposed to have paid. Three, to achieve a net social benefit rather than net profit so as to enhance equality of access to meeting needs of water, electricity, food, shelter, transport, health, and communication. So let me take that again. To achieve a net social benefit rather than net profit so as to enhance equality of access of access to meeting the needs of water, electricity, food, shelter, transport, health, communication, and etc. So one of the reasons why public sector organizations exist is to what? Bridge the inequality gap. Bridge the inequality gap. Because there are people who have access to water, electricity, communication, good roads, and other infrastructure facilities. However, there are other people who cannot also have it. So the only way we can bridge the gap of inequality. Now remember, no matter the policy governments put in place, the gap of inequality can never be bridged. <laughs> that is the thing. It's been there and it will continue to be there because the rich will continue to get rich and the gap will continue to be wider. However, in order for the government to, to some extent, provide some level of relief to the marginals, the government institution exists to be able to do that. So that government to come and construct your road for you, uh, give you boreholes, build a hospital for you in your community in relation to that. Then the last thing is to influence future social, political, economic or financial environment for optimal growth of the economy. So public sector organizations exist also for that reason. So these are what you have to understand. I see a comment there. Let me look at it quickly. Gideon, I'm, on. I'm watching live. All right, Gideon, thank you very much and welcome. So these are some of the reasons why public sector organizations exist. But a big question we ask ourselves is, how does government control public sector organizations? How does the government control public sector organizations? Now, I believe you can attest to this fact and you know uh, various ways that governments control public sector organizations. For instance, the appointment of the management or the CEOs. All right? So the president can appoint them and they must, they must be vetted by parliament and approved or confirmed or appointed. So one is through what? The appointment of the board or the chief executive officers. Two has to do with... Uh, the control that the government exercises over them. So whatever they are doing, governments can come in and say, do this, don't do that, do this, don't do that. So ways by which governments control public companies. Let's look at some of the ways, shall we? One, government powers can be exercised through the appointment of chief executives and members of the board of management. I've already said that. So through the appointment of the chief executive, that is the boss and then the board of directors are appointed by what? The government. So that is one way. Now, if I appoint you, then certainly I'm going to control you. Certainly I'm going to tell you what you have to do. If, you don't, if I don't like what you're doing, I can fire you anytime. That is one way government controls what? The public uh, companies or public organizations. Two, government can exercise control by giving specific directions concerning price uh, pr production costs and social goals. So specific direction can be given that 
if you procure goods, sell it at this price. That is government policy. If you make loss, which is what you are there to make, we're going to reinvest you with the fund. So government is there to give specific directives. That is also another way that government controls these organizations. Three, government uses the submission of annual reports as an opportunity to evaluate the performance of the enterprise. So they have to submit annual reports. Remember what I mentioned earlier about one of the objectives of public sector accounting to satisfy the legal regulatory requirements. So at the end of the year, they are going to be submitting annual reports. Now, based on that annual report, the president, parliament, they can decide that this guy, let's fire this guy from here. Let's dissolve the board because they are not doing any job. Or let's continue, let's empower them, let's provide them with more resources and they can do better for their organizations or they can do better for the country at large. Next one. Uh, they need to obtain government approval and guarantees for long-term loans. So if they are going for long-term loans, they need to obtain government approval for those uh, loans in relation to that. Then public companies can need to obtain government approval for their annual loans, budgets, their annual budget. So they don't just get up, decide how much they want to spend, but they have to do every spending based on the budget. And we will look at that later on if you are talking about public sector budgeting in relation to that. So all of these are critical for us in relation to that. And the final thing we want to touch on is the users of public uh, financial, public sector financial information. Now, who are the users of public sector financial information? I know you can list a lot, right? Uh, donor communities, citizens, uh, the media, the parliament, the management, the National Planning Commission, and the list goes on. But it is not just about listing the users of public uh, sector financial information, but they are objectives. In other words, why are they looking for the information? So if donor communities or donor organizations or donor institutions are requesting public information, why do they need it? If you and I, the, citizen of, the citizens of the country, we are requesting for public information, why do we need it? If the media is requesting, why do they need it? If the National Planning Commission, why do they need it? If Parliament is looking at the information, why do they need it? So it is not just about listing them out and dishing them out, but also being able to tell us about what? The objectives or the reasons why they need that information. So, I have a tall table of that here. I'm going to be going through some of the users and their information need. Certainly, the first one we want to go for is the taxpayer. So, the first, users of, the first user of financial information is what? The taxpayer. Why do they need it? Because they want to find out about the consequences of government spending and whether they will result in improvement in their and or increased taxation. So if government is taking more money or taking money from us and the undertaking projects, we need to assess whether those projects will be able to add value to our life. So they are constructing uh, interchanges, they are building hospitals, they are uh, procuring drones, they are procuring ambulances, they are procuring uh, whatever, establishing new, new, uh, creating new regions and all of that, it's about money bringing about the issue in relation to new voltage register. It's all about money. So at the end of the day, we want to find out where is our money going and is it worth it? Is it worth it? Because if a country can uh, do a, uh, can make national identification or uh, undergo voters registration and they will spend say two hundred million dollars, and uh, for instance, this is this is just an example. And for instance, Ghana can spend like say five hundred million dollars, and that country is far bigger than Ghana. Then we go to ask ourselves where the money is going and who is chopping the money, right? So the taxpayers are interested in it because they want to find out the consequences of government expenditure, whether government is spending the money well, and also to decide whether to continue to vote for them. So somebody is shouting, four more for Nana. Somebody is also shouting, let's change the government. Somebody is also shouting, let's change this. So if all, we are going to be making that decision, we're going to be making that decision based on what? The public 
sector information that we have about the government. So government is borrowing. Where is the money going? All of these are why the taxpayer will be interested in what? The public sector financial information. Two, the media. The media. Why would the media be interested? Let me know. I see your question. I'll answer that in a moment. Why would the media be interested in public sector financial information? Simple. The media want to uh, know how, again, the government financial information impacts on all aspects of the society. Because the media is more or less like the middle man or the middle man between what? The government and the people. Okay, so they become the conduit, the channel. So the media also need the information to assess. Hmm, is this what really the government is spending the money on? Is it worth it? So that they help the users or the taxpayers to better understand the information. Donor communities, they are interested in the public sector financial information to, to determine whether uh, the monies that they've donated are being used for the intended purposes. So if a donor community donates uh, a fund, say $200 million, to be used to construct hospitals in villages in the country, at the end of the day, they want to find out whether the $200 million was actually used to construct the hospitals and whether the money or the funds were not bloated. In other words, money for money was achieved in relation to that. That is why donor communities will be interested in the public sector financial information. Certainly, we will talk about the issues in relation to economic planning. So, the, Nas the uh, uh, Economic Planning Commission or the National Planning, uh, National Development Planning Commission, uh, they will be interested in the public sector information so that they can make what? Various policies for the country. So, let me know. Let me look at your question again. I mean, the ledgers account for recording deficit or excesses in government stores and the claims accounts in case of damages though this is a subtopic in my nigeria study pack i doubt if it form part of your class okay let me know i now get your question in relation to that in relation to that so what you are asking actually is not in our CA Ghana syllabus, but I'm going to be answering it anyway because I know my students are across public sector. I know I have students across in Nigeria, in Zambia, in Kenya, in South Africa. I have a lot of uh, students there. So I'm going to cover your question for you, okay, Lamino. I'm going to cover it certainly because it's part of public sector accounting and I'm not just serving Ghanaians, I serve across the globe as well. So I'll answer that question for you. Distance center, please, are a bit far as compared with free lectures. I don't get it. Distance lectures, can you repeat your question? Uh, I don't get your question. You said, please, are a bit fast as compared with the free lecture. I don't understand it. So maybe restate your question or something like that. You are making a statement, I guess, but I don't understand the statement. So. Please clarify the statement in relation to that. So users, we've spoken about the citizens, the media, donor communities, economic planners, then the controller and accountant general. He is also a user of the public sector financial information, right? Because remember, at the end of the day, all the spending units, MBAs, MMBAs, they are going to send their accounts to the controller accountant general for him to prepare the national accounts, which is then sent to the auditor general, sent to parliament, sent to the executive arm of government. After the auditing, it is going to be sent to the public accounts committee of parliament, and the parliament will debate on it. And if there are any corporates uh, or people found smelling literally on financial irregularity, they are invited before the commission's hearing and, and to explain themselves in relation to that. The Auditor General, definitely I've already mentioned that he is also a user of the financial, public sector financial information. He will want to examine to see whether the uh, financial information are prepared or expenses are incurred in line with the appropriation bill, are in line with the value for money and there are no financial irregularities. Then the government's trade union, okay? But the public uh, or the civil service, 
they will be interested in public financial information for the money, all right? So salary negotiation, uh, benefits negotiation, that's something that we need to also look out for. Then the World Bank, IMF, uh, multilateral and bilateral agencies, they are also interested in the public sector information because they want to assess. You know, Ghana goes to the IMF, for loans, World Bank for funding and on various things. So they are also interested in our public financial information to determine whether, you know recently it's in the news that the World Bank, I think IMF is warning the government about the borrowing issue. But today, as at the time I was, uh, um, uh, I was about filming this, the vice president was uh, uh, having uh, was talking about the town hall meeting and he was our gross GDP, our, our debt to gross GDP, our debt to GDP rather, our debt to GDP is falling and for that reason we are not borrowing. So even though we are borrowing more, uh, the, the debt to GDP is falling. So it's not an issue that we have to think about. But let's see how it goes. So the World Bank IMF is also interested in all of that for the country in relation to that. There's certainly businesses, okay? Businesses, the corporate world, they are interested in public sector information. They want to find out the annual budget, how much is going into various sectors so that they can decide what, how they can position themselves, how they can make various decisions as well for their country in relation to that. So these are some of the users. I have a list of them. The, the list is very tall. Uh, I have a list of them. There are a lot, but we've spoken about taxpayers, uh, the media, donor communities, IMF, uh, uh, Auditor General, Controller Accountant General, the Parliament, all, all of these guys are users of public sector information. Distance Center, he said, just want to say you are a bit fast. Oh, okay, that's what he want to say, I'm a bit fast. All right, all right, thank you very much. I'm gonna work on that, so thank you for the notice. Um, Distance Center. Okay, right, so these are what you need to understand about uh, the issue in relation to introduction to public sector accounting and finance. Now, for those of you who are studying and who want to study under my mentorship for your examination preparation, for a limited time, I am giving 35% off as my Val's Day gift to you. So for a limited time, you can visit our, our website, insurapremiumuniversity.com slash courses. The link is in the description and you can enroll in the course online. And on the checkout page, you can use the coupon code, I love Insura Premium. On the checkout page, you use the coupon code, I love Insura Premium. That will automatically give you 35% off your course so that you can enroll in the course and study and prepare well for your examination. My objective is that you'll be able to get access to the full content so you prepare well for your examination. Sometimes on YouTube, you cannot have access to the complete uh, content that you need to prepare for your exams. But when you enroll in the full course, like the public sector, for instance, we've covered uh, a lot of the things so far, budgeting, PFA, value for money, gift maze, role of public financial, uh, uh, role of and functions of uh, public officers. Then we are currently we're going to be doing all of these things and getting access to the complete course will help you very well so you can prepare well for your examination. So if this is something you are interested in, you can head on to my website, insurapremiumuniversity.com slash courses. The link in the, is in the description. You, you select a course then on the checkout page, use the coupon code, I love Insura Premium, and that will give you 35% off your course so that you can enroll and get access to our study materials, lecture videos, a one-on-one -on -one session with me via Skype so you can prepare well for your examination. For those of you who are also interested in my manuals, there's my public sector accounting and finance manual. Everything that I've been discussing, I'm sharing with you, will uh, is in this book. It's Henry Ghana Cities here, and you can get a copy by calling 050-114-9296. And also, my new taxation book, this is Advanced Taxation, and uh, it's a combination with the principle of taxation in level two and advanced taxation 
in level three in relation to that. So you make sure that you get copy a copy of this book if it is something you are interested in, or the public sector accounting and finance book if it is something that you are also interested in. So if there are any questions that you have, you leave them in the comment box. I'm going to read all of your questions and I'm going to reply to all of your questions for you in relation to that. This is a business lecturer in Wooden Show every weekday, Monday to Friday at 4 p.m. I come live and I teach you on various subjects, on various topics to prepare all well for your examination. Remember, the way I designed this course is based on the questions that students ask. So what I've talked today, what I've gone through today with you is a question that a student asks and that is what I'm teaching. So if there is a topic you want me to cover, you leave it in the chat box, you leave it in the comment box. I'm going to look at it and chances are tomorrow or next week I will be covering your topic so I can help you to prepare for your examination. So thank you very much for joining the broadcast today. Very much excited about it. Lamino, Edward. Gideon, Distance Center, and all of you who will be joining and watching the playback of this broadcast. Thank you very much. Remember, if you have not subscribed to the channel, hit the subscription button and also uh, 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 hit the notification bell so that if I go live or I release new lecture videos, you will be the first person to be notified. That way, you will get the materials as fast as you want and as quick as you need it so that you will be able to prepare for the examination. So thank you for joining the broadcast today. Remember to share the video on your social media, on Facebook, on WhatsApp, and all platforms. And let's co connect with a lot of people so we can together help a lot and help a lot of people to prepare well for the examination. So thank you for joining the class today. And I will be looking at what we will do tomorrow. I see a comment, let me look at it. Sefa Dankwa. How do, do I get the books outside Accra? So, Sefa Dankwa, you can call 050-114-9296 and delivery can be arranged. Let me leave that in the chat box. 050-114-9296. So, you can call the number 050-114-9296. I just left it in the chat box. And what you call or WhatsApp that number, okay? Call or WhatsApp. Once you make your payment, your delivery will be arranged, which you will pay for, and you can get access to the books and use them to study and prepare well for your examination. So that's it. Say so uh, you you call you WhatsApp or you call that number 050-114-9296, request them for the books, and you can uh, we can arrange delivery for you. So if there are any other questions that you have, leave them in the chat box. If you are watching live, or put them in the comment box. If you are watching the replay of the video and I'll be answering all of the questions for you in relation to that okay so say far that is it you call or WhatsApp that number and we'll be able to arrange your delivery for you okay Right, so this is where I'm going to conclude today's discussion. We've discussed the issue about introduction to public sector accounting. We look at the objectives, we look at the, uh, the various levels that public sector organizations are. We look at the issues in relation to the users. But remember one important thing. This is the takeaway for today's discussion. If you're writing public sector accounting and finance, this act is critical. That is the Public Financial Management Act 2016 Act 921. The Public Financial Management Act 2016 Act 921. You can Google this right now and download it. In this act, there are a lot of things in there that will help you in revenue and expenditure management. A lot of things there that will help you in the role of or function of uh, public financial uh, or public officers and then also some issues on budgeting so that is a critical act it's a fundamental act that you can look at now there are various other acts like the procurement act then also the issue about the EPSAS like I mentioned if you want me to cover the EPSAS or you want me to release some videos on the EPSAS put it in the comment box or put it in the chat box that you want to see more of the EPSAS and I'm going to make them available on this channel so you can prepare for your examination. So 
That is where I'm concluding today on the business lecture in Wooden Show. Join me same time tomorrow at 4 p.m. as we continue with our journey in relation to what we are doing for the ICA examination and certainly by extension other forms of examination, the ACCA or other forms. So I'll see you same time tomorrow on the business lecture in Wooden Show as we continue with our discussion and continue with the journey. Remember, subscribe to the channel and become a VIP member and also share the channel with your friends, your colleagues so that we can reach a lot of people as much as possible so we can help a lot of people in relation to that. So I'll see you same time tomorrow as we continue with our discussion.